welcome back to the dollhouse <clears throat> and happy new year as you can see i'm still a little bit under the weather but i really really missed you guys so i wanted to go ahead and put a video out there to let you all know that i am alive and i am doing well and i hope that you guys have been enjoying 2022 so far i have so much in store for the dollhouse so if you haven't already please go ahead and hit that subscribe button Okay, so I am super excited for today's video. I know I have been talking to you guys about me having another surgery. I did get asked a lot of questions and after watching this video, you'll see why it was so hard for me to DM you guys back and forth. So I wanted to present you guys with all the information that I think is necessary so that you guys can understand exactly what is happening um, with my body and like what I'm about to get done and answer all the questions that I was getting in my DMs. Okay, so first things first, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right, now that that's handled. Um, am I having a round two? So I'm actually not having a round two BBL. So I am currently seven months post-op and I'm loving my results. I think that my results look very natural and um, I feel like like the areas that I wanted to improve are improved. So the reason why I'm having this surgery is separate from like me not being happy with my results. So if you go back and look at my past update videos, you'll see that there is an area um, on my lower abdomen where I tell you guys that I'm experiencing some inflammation and I'm not too sure like what it's from and why it's still there but basically over the span of the time of I want to say around eight weeks to now there's this area on my lower abdomen and I'll go ahead and loop a picture in right here so that you guys can see where the inflammation pretty much never went away. So once I noticed that there was an area on my stomach that continuously stayed inflamed, it was a red flag because no matter how much I massaged it, no matter how much I compressed it, it still would not go away. And I know a lot of dolls that I've spoken to, they've experienced something similar, but I'm pretty sure what is going on with me is probably separate from like all of the other dolls that have experienced inflammation in their lower abdomen. Just to kind of go back a little bit, but when I first came back from Houston, I developed a, a large seroma. I talked about this in one of my update videos as well. So because there wasn't anyone at the massage therapist's office that could drain my seroma, and I live in Los Angeles and my surgeon was in Houston, I had to find someone to, um, to go ahead and drain my seroma. So <laughs> please be careful with who you decide to go to if your surgeon is not in your area because this definitely affects your results. I didn't know it at the time, but I went to this lady who was posing as a nurse practitioner um, and called herself a post-op nurse. This is someone who I discovered via the one of the Jung Money Facebook groups. So I asked her, was she able to drain the seroma? She said that she does it all the time, yada, yada. And so I eventually went to meet up with her in order to get my seroma drained. Go to this lady and... Um, I don't know I kind of feel it's this is my fault like I'm not putting the blame on anybody else because you know I'm grown and I could have made a better decision but neither here nor there I was desperate and so I went to this lady and we actually ended up meeting up at her house where she did a like lymphatic drainage massage and then she drained the fluid so here's where the problem arised I believe so instead of typically when you get your your seroma drained a surgeon or a nurse whomever they like use a syringe to go ahead and pull the fluid out of you now depending on the size of the seroma they're going to use a different sized um what do you call it like the the plastic part that actually collects the fluid i don't know exactly what it's called right now but anyway the syringe part so they use like larger sizes for larger seromas and maybe smaller ones for smaller seromas so that you don't have to continuously reinsert the needle in order to get rid of the seroma, right? So instead of this post-op nurse 
like using a larger size syringe or leaving the needle in and just changing out the plastic part she decides that she's going to go ahead and stick me with almost 15 needles i kid you not i'm gonna insert a picture <laughs> so yes this is ridiculous okay so i i knew that that wasn't right but i was just kind of like i need this aroma gone like i said i was desperate so make sure that you have somebody in mind so that you don't have to be desperate like me so i'm taking full responsibility like i knew that it wasn't right and i continued with it that was my bad anywho so during the process of her sticking me with all of these needles i remember a specific time when she inserted a needle and it didn't really hurt it just felt like a pinch a prick or whatever because i have a very high pain tolerance but she inserted the needle and I remember blood just squirting out everywhere. Like, I believe she must have hit something that caused blood to just like gush out everywhere. So following the, um, following the, the seroma drain that she performed, she reached out to me maybe like a week or so later, a couple of days later, and she asked me how I was doing. I noticed at that time that I had a bruise but I it, it was a painful bruise like I couldn't massage the area I just tried to ice it or whatever but I didn't think anything of it so I told her that I was doing fine so a couple weeks um, go on and I'm noticing that the bruise is still kind of there but it's starting to look better and feel better and underneath the bruise I'll go ahead and insert a picture underneath the bruise I noticed that it's just very like red I, don't, I I'm guessing it was blood building up which is a bruise so I was like okay didn't think much of it it's fine so basically over time the bruise start to harden and get hard which is why I thought it was inflammation so I'm like maybe this is scar tissue maybe it's inflammation like I'm not too sure whatever the case was so I would go to my massage therapist and ask them they're like okay well we're gonna try to massage it out and see what happens well, bad idea looking back on it if you have an area that you're not sure what the heck it is do not massage it because that is not the right thing to do <laughs> don't do it <laughs> um, I sent pictures to John and he was like I'm not too sure what it is. It could be a variety of things. The best thing for me to do is to see you in person. So I waited until my three month post-op checkup. And um, a little bit after that, actually, I flew to Houston, had an in-person consultation with Jung. And this is what he said. Just getting up. I thought we was gonna have time to explore, but we only have like an hour and a half until my three o'clock appointment. So I'm super excited. I'm hoping that Dr. Jung takes a look at this area and just sees like what's going on with this right here. I think it's scar tissue. So I'm hoping that he injects some steroids to go ahead and flatten it out so that I can heal and move forward with my life. But um, outside of that, um, it's gonna be a great day today. All right, I'll check in with you guys after the appointment. Okay, so I made it inside and I'm just here waiting on Dr. Jung to come and take a look at me. Of course, my areas of concern are the inflammation that I have and um, also just asking questions about working out and like, can I get my own machine and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna be able to record during the post-op, but I am excited and I'll see you guys right after. All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, so just leaving Dr. Jung's office and I am disappointed because um, pretty much we have to figure out what exactly is the like inflammation slash like hardness that's happening in that area that I was showing you guys. So he said that we're not going to treat it right now because we need to figure out what it is, which makes sense. But it's just disappointing because I was ready for the city over with. But um, he requested that I either get an ultrasound or MRI, MRI um, and kind of go from there and from there just see what they say what it looks like it is if they say that it's some type of like heart tissue then at that point he knows that it's scar tissue and will begin treatment but as far as like being able to really i guess treat the area that's something that we won't be able to do until like nine months so yeah that's the update um i'm gonna go get food and head back to the airport so as you can 
see. Um, I didn't get what I thought I was going to get. I thought that he was going to go ahead and like use the steroids to go ahead and knock out the scar tissue. But instead, he told me that I need a CT scan and that um, I would have to wait for the results before we could even move forward with um, doing any type of treatment. So that was very hard news to hear because, of course, like, when you have a lump on your stomach, which at that point it became a lump, when you have a lump on your stomach, it definitely does affect your quality of life. Like, it's like an inconvenience when your whole entire stomach is flat and then you have a bulb, just a bulge just popping out. Like, it just made me feel very just like self-conscious a little bit. So I wanted to definitely get it taken care of ASAP, but with this whole surgery process, it's definitely a process. Nothing happens overnight. So... Um, I had to wait and I actually had to get a CT scan originally he wanted me to get an MRI but when I went to my primary care physician he said that let's just try a CT scan first and see what happens let's also get a ultrasound to see if there's anything going on with your reproductive system um, and things of that sort so I'm freaking out I'm like oh god I don't know what this is because you know at that point Jung is like well maybe it's surgery related maybe it's not surgery related in the primary care physician is like it could be anything so I'm thinking the worst <laughs> I'm like going through it mentally I'm like oh god like what if it's something serious what if it's a tumor like what am I going to do and so I'm talking to my husband he's calming me down I go and get the CT scan I had to drink this um nasty nasty clear liquids to do a CT scan with contrast and long story short i'll go ahead and insert my ct scan results and as you can see from the results there is a bulge on my stomach that you can see and to make a long story short they ended up finding out that it's actually either a hematoma which is a blood full like a um a blood filled sac or a steroma which my guess is that it's a hematoma that formed from when she stuck me with the needle and the blood gushed out and instead of the blood like going back reabsorbing into my body it just continued to build 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 and harden over time and probably turn into like a blood clot in order to stop it from internally bleeding so <laughs> Pretty much, I have to have surgery in order to fix this problem. 